Renting a $320 five by five storage unit in San Francisco. He asked me to create some space for him in a uh, big closet I had in the house, which I did in exchange for dinner and drinks. And after the week when he came back to pick up his stuff, uh, the light bulb went off and we realized that we had an opportunity here to create something that really mattered to people. Since then, we've been moving incredibly fast. We are a team of seven in the office and uh, four on the streets, and we're all committed to positively impacting your wallet by letting you save money, your community by fostering positive interactions, and the environment by uh, reducing carbon footprint and uh, the, uh, the ugly and expensive storage facilities. Uh, we operate similar to Airbnb. You could think of us as the Airbnb for storage space. Uh, we have insurance protection, we have uh, ratings and reviews, identity verifications, private messaging, calendar systems, and a number of other really great features. And, and uh, we have been signing people up in the last couple months and getting a lot of traction, a lot of overwhelmingly positive feedback. And we've learned a lot of things. We've learned, one, that hosts are made up of three different types of people. One are the students who are cash strapped and will do everything they can to make an extra buck. Uh, next are people who are sharers who may already be hosts on Airbnb or Lyft drivers who are comfortable talking and, and dealing with strangers. And third are property managers who may have multiple spaces that are underutilized and they want to maximize revenue. Renters, on the other hand, have many subgroups and we've been really, really interested in seeing all types of different people who want to use roofs that are coming out of the woodwork. These range from students who uh, go abroad for the winter or go home for the summer and when they go back to school, their parents who, who want to rent out their rooms and help pay for their textbooks. Uh, this could be the small business who has inventory they want, they, they want to keep near their business or the surfer who wants to keep their board near their favorite surf spot. Roost connects these renters and these hosts, and in doing so, we reduce the cost of storage space in half. And, and to make money, we take a 20% transaction fee. We also have partnerships uh, developed and more in the works with value-adding companies such as movers, professional organizers, hauling companies, security camera companies, uh, and, and a lot more good stuff is coming. Uh, so, our mobile app is already underway. We're set to launch our fully functioning product in the next two weeks. We're really excited about that. Uh, we will be uh, you know, getting the peer-to-peer -peer market running in San Francisco, then moving to New York, and then on to uh, cities that have high property value and low urban sprawl. And then from the peer-to-peer -peer market, we'll be moving to the commercial space, where the transaction sizes are a lot larger and we can have a commission sales force going out and finding these deals. Uh, to date, we've raised about $300,000 from three prominent investors, and uh, we've just recently opened up a new round where we're trying to raise $2 million to fund this growth. Uh, so, any of you out here, I'd, I'd love to talk to you. And uh, thank you guys so much for having me here. I really appreciate this opportunity. Thanks a lot, John. Thanks, John. So, any questions from Guillaume, George, or Axel? So, do you have any numbers on your current traction? <clears throat> yes, yeah, so uh, our marketing, uh, our signups have been growing every day, more and more come every day. Uh, in the last two weeks, uh, we've signed up about 200 hosts. Uh, that, that's made up of maybe some people having five to ten different spots in one building, for instance. And uh, renters, who we haven't even gone out and marketed to, have been seeing the message to the host that we're putting out and contacting us and saying, hey, when, when can I store this? When can I find that? I'm really interested in this. Uh, so the traction is, is small now, but it's growing exponentially every day. So Jonathan, you said uh, you're the Airbnb uh, of the storage space. What would you know stop them from saying, "Hey, this is a cool idea. We put this onto our product portfolio as well"? Sure, that's uh, that's a really good question. That's kept me up uh, a lot of nights until Airbnb has has become really clear with their expansion plan, moving into the hospitality market and all the things uh, involved in, in in the hospitality with the food, with the cleaning. Uh, with the key drops, 
and to to go through into back into storage, I think would be to dilute their message uh, because you know, uh, to be honest, the the price point for the uh, for renting out your room is higher than it is for storing your your items. Okay, Jonathan, thank you so much. Thank you. So, our next presenter is Chen. Can I have some issues with your last name? Kia Chiboshi. Okay, and he will present Social Eyes. Give me one second. Yeah, sure. So, first of all, I would like to say if there's enough applause in the end, all shots will be joy. I just wanted to tell you this. <laughs> so, okay, uh, my name is John, and I'm the founder of Socialize. Socialize is an application that is designed to make your social lives easier. And here's how. So I'll go with an example. Say you are in the mood for coffee and you have some spare time, but you don't know who to call, who to text. That would be the usual case that we do, like go to your phone, call them, text them, or Facebook status update. They are not viable solutions. It's not the best channel as of now to get your, hurt, uh, get your voice be heard. So what we basically do is we develop this system of a location-based open invitation in which you choose the mood of the activity that you want to do and you post it on Socialize and this mood will be transmitted to your friends in a radius, certain radius, as a notification. So by doing this you will be able to get them to uh, join you. Uh, it's beautiful because you don't disturb anybody uh, it's an open invitation, so you don't get to have an uh, answer of a no, and yet you don't have to write like who's up for a coffee or like the, those lousy things. Uh, we are a team of six guys, uh, four engineers, uh, top notch, uh, very good graphic designer, multiple award winner, and me as the CEO. Uh, I, I hold an MBA from University of San Diego. And our goal is to get this brand, uh, a global brand, starting from here, San Francisco. Uh, before that, I forgot, uh, how do we make money? So basically, uh, first of all, you will be given limited moves in the application, in the beginning, like 11 or 12. Uh, so if you want to unlock, like, rather than posting eating, you want to post like ice cream, uh, you will have to pay a premium of $1 to unlock all the mood contents even local contests all, all around the world. Say in Russia, you'll be able to post vodka. And second of all, instead of coffee mood, you'll be able to post Starbucks mood. So we'll make money out, out of the uh, sponsored moods, in a way. Uh, so we, we are looking for $900,000 right now. And uh, our goal is to be strong enough with the strong traction to go to the VCs within a year and knock on their doors. Uh, we also want to launch our Android application within a year and we want to introduce gamification into this concept. So if you're sharing lots of ET moods in the application, well, you will unlock the title of being a foodie you know, or a gourmet or whatever you want. And as long as you're like socializing, your social bar, social level will be up high, which is also encouraging you to invite more of your friends and also um, uh, making the application more viral. And our eventual goal is to uh, make an exit, hopefully uh, within five years, with uh, 15 million active users, uh, and hopefully with $400 million of valuation. Thank you. So you're trying to raise 900k. What are you going to do with that 900k? Where's that money going to go? Thank you. So I think it's better if I just go here. Okay. So uh, basically, the money will be spent mostly on the team part <coughs> and on marketing. 
Uh, we we are looking for <coughs> talented marketing uh, folks to join our team. Uh, two of them. Uh, we, I don't want to call them marketers. I, I want to call them growth hackers because that's what we are looking at right now. And community managers. And we will also be spending some money for the marketing too to reach our uh, 100,000 active user goal at the end of the first year. So. Um, my question actually is not for really for you, John, but for the audience. Who of you guys would like to use that type of application? Raise your hands. Okay, one, two, three and a half. So, some more to do on the compelling story. This is good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, thank you so much, Chen. And big hands for Jen also. So, I'm from Trustleaf. I'm just looking for you. Here we go. Give me one second. founder and CEO of Trustleaf. Trustleaf makes it easy for small business owners to borrow money from friends and family using personal loans. Here is Patty. She wants to open her own gourmet bakery and needs 30000 but banks have turned her down. Like 38% of the 6 million small business owners each year, she decided to ask her friends and family to loan her the money. Everyone knows that it's stressful and awkward to ask money from friends and family. All the top results on Google recommends putting this agreement into writing and communicating with clear expectations. But they don't suggest any integrated platform for doing so. Luckily, Patty found Trustly. First, she set a funding goal, show off her business plan, and pick a few different loan options that will work for her. Then she invites her friends and family to pledge the amount they feel comfortable with and sign the legal documents online. We work with DLA Piper to structure all the legal documents. For only $9.99 per month, Trustleaf makes it easy for her to manage the relationships and keep track of all the payments in the entire lending cycle. On average, people borrow $25,000 and pay, pay, pay back in about 18 months. This friends and family loan totals 60 billion a year, with an expected lifetime value of $180 per user. The total adjustable market is about 1.1 billion. We, for, for distributions, 40% of our, our traffic coming from our content marketing efforts. For example, we have been featured by the Silicon Valley Bitters Journal last week. And we are also developing partnership with the SBA, SCORE, and other companies whose client base are also our target market. For the team, I have founded two companies before, and I bought multi-million dollar revenue to a mobile hardware startup in just nine months. My co-founder, Daniel, uh, has tons of small business marketing experience, most recently at Yelp. Curtis Small at DLA Piper is our attorney and advisor, and the CTO of Home Depot is also our advisor. Borrowing money from friends and family has always been common. Now with Trusty, we have just make it easy. And we are going to raise a small seed round, about 200K, and come to talk to us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any questions from you? Hey, thanks. I think it was a great pitch and I, I love the story. Um, I, I'm not sure I understood like what's the need for people to have a long time during like a relationship. Like um, what's affecting your LTV and why is that a recurring service? 
as opposed to a one-off. Like, uh, like, could, couldn't you like put that document somewhere and, and be done with it? Why would people keep paying you? Yeah, actually, we have a different pricing model. So subscription is one of them because people need to pay pay back their loans uh, on on a monthly basis. So. We, we handle all the transactions and uh, all the, all the remarks. Yeah, kind of piggybacking on Yon's question. If you think about, instead of doing a monthly subscription fee, or you probably win on very small loans, but lose on very big ones, that you just take a percentage, and you know, whatever the life cycle is, so it's maybe even easier for the users to handle it. Yeah, that, that's the... Uh, yeah, we definitely want to do that, but uh, that requires a uh, broker dealer license. So we don't want to touch that part yet. So we want to be the go-to platform for friends and family loans uh, where they manage their relationship and, and payment with payments. Uh, in the future, we are going to expand it into a bigger model for why like uh, direct lending and uh, more, more, more towards the peer-to-peer -to -peer model. I got a question about this because one of the things I'm looking at is I can understand from a lending standpoint why you know young people might be wanting to borrow money from their parents, but where's the crying need in the Gen X, Gen Y, and, and baby boom generation to have this to be able to uh, complete these kinds of transactions? Um, actually, based on the data, like 38% 30, 30, of people borrow money from friends and family to start their business, and uh, some people ask us a question, like, how are we going to different from Kickstarter? But basically, we, we come before them. Uh, one of our slogans is, like, Kickstarter, your Kickstarter pro project. So, so I think uh, we, are very, we are in a very unique position where um, for most of the entrepreneurs or small business people at the very early stage, they don't uh, have any other choices besides their personal saving and friends and family. So we still believe it's a big opportunity. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. So I think we have the, the first four startups doing really an amazing good job. So now it's up to our jury to vote for them. And I also like to ask you to vote. For that, I have to share with you what we do. You can vote via your mobile phone. So, but let me just open the slide. So we had four companies, one was Outset, Roost, Social Eyes, and Trust Leaf. So now I'd like to ask you guys in the audience, if you text just the keyword like Outset, Roost, SIs, oops, sorry, let me go back, I don't know, that is later. Stay. So, just text the keyboard uh, you see, like uh, all that was SIs or tea leaves to 22333, and we check later how you voted for it. In the meantime, I like to ask you guys. So, all set with Gadi Bashwitz. The new kind of hotel booking engine that matches hotels to your preference, preferences using millions of review, reviews. So, what do you think? Wow! Every, so, we have one to four is the scaler. So, we have nine points in total. Thank you so much. I want to big hand us. The next presentation was Roost with Jonathan Gillen, a simple platform that connects people with extra space 
to those in need of local storage. We only have one card. Come on. I printed more cards. Okay, also here. Nine points for your congratulations to Jonathan. But let's see how the crowd will uh, vote for you later on. So now for Chen with social eyes, a fun and easy way to you for you to socialize with the people around you. So here we have a total of five points. So congratulations also here. Thank you so much. And Anthony presented Trust Leaf, Friends and Family Lending Made Easy. So please. So here we have 10 points in total. Congratulations. But this is not the end. I will check uh, later and we will have at the end the total winners. So you know now? I, I'm not multitasking because I have to log in. <laughs> okay, if we can have more people in our team. <laughs> okay, no. So let's continue with the society's three accelerator teams. So today, I'm really happy after we started, perhaps Axel, you want to say some words to that and I get ready for the next uh, slide. All right, uh, thank you. Yeah, so um, the, the second batch basically are uh, Accelerator graduates, people who have been with us for, for three months. Um, it was the first Accelerator program, so also we learned a lot. And obviously when you start this first, I mean, no matter what, there's a ton of learning. Uh, one of the things we learned is that we didn't communicate quite well in the beginning how intense this was. And uh, I got that feedback from, from the team. And so uh, all I can do, and I promised for the upcoming teams that we will tell, this is not kind of a walk through the park. Uh, we're trying to do uh, traction acceleration, which means we try to help startups get significant traction. And that's a difficult task. And even though I was probably lucky in my life, in all five companies I started before, traction was something I never had trouble with. I mean, unlike, um, or like Ashley A. Guillaume, I had also one failure in the company. And even there, Traction was actually pretty good. The, the, the problem was, uh, this was right after I started a very, very successful one, and the second one was, was just a little bit successful, and this was just not enough for me. I was actually frustrated, and I probably spent too much time with the, kind of the success of the past company, drove around too long with my Ferraris and stuff like that, so I totally screwed up, I have to say. But uh, that screw up, and you will probably have that once too, is a good thing to have because it kind of organizes your, your entrepreneurial life uh, quite a bit. So now the, 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 the part, the, the teams we have today um, came with, I mean, a little bit more than idea stage. Uh, all had sort of a prototypish version. Some had a little traction already. And we went through kind of interesting iterations. I also learned a lot on the, on the mentor side to help you know, get the good out of the teams. Because one of the things I actually saw in many mentors before that, the art of mentoring is not that you make all the suggestions and then they simply execute because they say, oh, okay, this guy did a lot of stuff before, so maybe he's right. Because you would not help them at the end of the day. So what I try to do, and I think we're, we went pretty well, is to actually try to have their ideas reiterated themselves often enough to actually come up with a solution when there was a problem. Okay, so we have uh, teams coming up and I think the first one is Lips uh, because of the B and uh, I think we have Justin, right? Yes, All thank right. you so much. Justin Kim from Texas. He is the co-founder of Lips and I can see when do you have time to work? Is it playing basketball, swimming, running, biking, hiking, fishing, reading? That is what LinkedIn says. 
I think that was just to make me look good. I don't really know if I do all those things. So, right. Okay. All right. all right, well, I'm Justin Jackson. I'm the co-founder of Blitz. Uh, what Blitz is, is we're the most comprehensive local search. And the reason we're the most comprehensive local search is we combine the most popular services that almost everybody in this room, I would bet, use, but we combine them all into a single search. So there's three categories of of things that we are services that we believe constitute the most comprehensive search: uh, ratings and reviews, deals and coupons, and social media. And if you're a consumer, uh, for example, uh, if you're new to new to San Francisco like I am, uh, and you want to find a restaurant in your area, one thing you might do is you would do, you would do a Google search. That's a very typical thing people do. But Google's not going to show you all the ratings and reviews uh, that are in the area. They're certainly not going to show you all the, the coupons and deals that might relate to that restaurant. So what you end up having to do, if you want to find all this information, is you perform several different searches. So what we've done is uh, some of the popular services, as you can see, that we've uh, decided to aggregate are uh, deals and coupon services like Groupon, Living Social, uh, we have about 70 deal and coupon providers that we combine into our single search. We've also provided a businesses Facebook and Twitter feeds, which, I mean, whoever finds a business's Facebook or, th or Twitter feeds, you, you literally have to go look for them, or you have to go directly to that business's website. And, and then, of course, if there's ratings and reviews, uh, and you're not satisfied with just Yelp, which is really the only rating review that, that you know a lot of people use. There, there's a whole bunch of other ratings review providers for like, for example, if using the case scenario of a restaurant, you might want to look up Urban Spoon or Restaurant.com. Uh, there's so many different review providers and limiting yourself to one review uh, is, in our mind, not the most comprehensive service. Uh, so we launched the service in 2013. Um, that's our, we essentially have a prototype that's web-based right now. We're working on the mobile app. Uh, we're constantly adding new APIs right now, and that's one of the things uh, when I get to the end that we're raising funds for is the mobile app and to uh, implement additional APIs. Uh, it's very intuitive how it works. Essentially, there's a number of APIs out there. We're just combining them. Uh, how many of you have ever heard of Kayak or Trivago? So we're essentially going to be the Kayak or Trivago of local search. Nobody's ever tried this. Every time I presented this to investors or other individuals, they, they, they're surprised that nobody else is doing this out there, but we're, we're the first to attempt to tackle it. Um, the ways we'll make money are, number one, we will have a monthly uh, premium that, that businesses will pay, or a monthly subscription fee that businesses will pay for premium features. Uh, the other way that we will make money is through redemption of deals. So when you get onto our mobile app, which is to be developed, you will find a business in the area that you want to use and there'll be a deal, you'll click on it, we get a, a percentage of that deal. We also will be selling our API uh, to different businesses. So far, we have about 20,000 web-based users per month. Um, we, our, our traction, it, it's, it's growing. Um, it's, it's difficult without a large marketing budget in this type of industry to, to make waves. And so that's one of the other things that we're hoping to, to raise some money for is to assist with uh, getting additional traction. Um, we were at the launch festival a few months ago. One of the great feedbacks we received there is we were one of the top three out of several hundred startups to um, as a finalist for a scholarship for our web app. Unfortunately, we were not first place, but we were in the top three. Uh, the team is myself and my brother, uh, which typically raises eyebrows. You wonder how you can work with your brother. Actually, my brother and I were very close. My brother has uh, been in IT space for about 15 years. I've, I have a legal background, and uh, it's just, it's a great team. We work together great. Um, our burn rate is about $500 a month. We've raised under $100,000. We're seeking $500,000 at this time. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we want to build our mobile app. We want to build some traction through getting downloads onto uh, new Apple uh, iPhones. When the new iPhone 6 comes out, we'd like to be your first deal uh, and local search app. And our plan is in the next three to five years to take books to IPO or to be acquired. Historically, uh, companies like Apple, Yahoo, uh, Google, and Microsoft, they have found companies like ours very appealing, and there's a great track record for companies like ours to be acquired within the next three years based upon what we're doing. I uh, appreciate all you guys being here, and I appreciate Society3 for uh, putting on this, uh, this uh, meeting. Thank you. Justine. Any questions?
question? I, uh, it's very impressive the, uh, what you're trying to do and what you're trying to attack. Uh, one of the things that you tried, uh, you mentioned that you're trying to raise 500K. Uh, again, I'm asking, one of the reasons I'm asking, what are you going to do with that money? Because uh, to, to me, to an investor, or to an entrepreneur and everything, one of the key things we want to see beyond the technology, beyond the good stories and everything, is how are you going to make money with this? And how are you going to rise to number one in your business vertical and stay there? And the only way you're really going to do that is to sell. So I want to know out of this 500K, how much are you going to be developing the sales, how much are you going to be developing marketing, business development and everything? And if, and if it's all going to development, you know, you might, that might be one of the reasons why it's been, you know, hit or miss and everything like that, okay? So that, that's a great question. Um, obviously, five hundred thousand dollars can get eaten up very quickly in a startup. So uh, what we plan to do with the five hundred thousand is we have gotten some quotes based upon um, the the work that we've already done. It's actually a, a, a concept that is it translates well without too much money into a mobile app. So we've gotten quotes for about fifty thousand dollars to build a mobile app. Um, about another fifty thousand will be to implement all the various APIs that we have not yet built out. We have the plumbing, but we haven't put in all those APIs. So literally you're talking about the last $400,000 is primarily going to be used to get those installs on the new devices. So uh, the average iPhone has approximately 40 to 45 apps on them. We don't want to be your 46th or 47th app because that's, that's money not well spent. So we, we can target, I've talked to a number of different very good marketing companies and, and I, I have a small business myself so I, I understand the concept of marketing money needs to be very well spent, especially when you're talking about entering this type of space with this type of budget. So we found that it's about $1.60 to about $1.90 per install on, on, a, on, a, on a phone to get into the app, uh, the, uh, the store. And so that's where the money goes. We, we anticipate we'll have between one to 200,000 active users with that, um, that budget. Hey, I'm just surprised why you're not a mobile first company. You seem to have had a website for about a year. What what didn't, didn't you start with a mobile app first? Well, the, the first thing we wanted to do is build out the plumbing and to get the service to work and get some some feedback. We've actually uh, made some changes in the service as we've gone just from the our, our core network of friends, family, people that sort to try and refine the service. And we didn't want to pour money into a mobile app and we weren't really ready with the service or we felt like it was the right look, the right feel and operate correctly. Um, the, other, the other angle too is that my, my brother is essentially been the main engineer and mobile space is not his, his core expertise. It's mainly been developing, building out this web service. Okay, thank you so much. Big hands for Justin. Our next presenter is Daniel Brodovich, and the company is Cookstream. One second, Daniel is also uh, with us in the Society 3 Accelerator. We'll finish with us tomorrow, I think. And yeah, here we go, if you want to, to get up. Thank you very much. My name is um, Daniel Rodich. I'm so the founder of Bookstream. We are connecting uh, passionate food lovers with uh, professional chefs for cooking related questions. So, what's the problem? Uh, you're in the middle of your culinary creation, and then finally you realize that something doesn't look nor taste right from what you actually initially thought. And, and you realize, oh gosh, I should have bought a frozen pizza or something like that instead. So instead of actually uh, panicking, we want to give you a chef from, of which you can actually consult and talk via video chat. So we're available on both the on our website, on the app, and the most important thing is the widget which you're actually having on the recipe websites and other places where you actually want to have. It's an API for the chef. So uh, how exactly it works? We need to have actually a question. You, uh, choose what kind of cuisine you're interested about, method or diet, and then you just click Ask a Chef. They're sending push notification to all those chefs in the database who can help you out with that specific question, and the chef, which is free right now, going to 
answer and actually FaceTime with you. You can show what's going on and uh, you can give your valuable advice how to either fix your meal or you make it better or teach you how to the improvements. At the end, uh, you rate the chef and uh, tip like you would do it on Uber or Lyft and it's about 50 cents per minute. And uh, you can share your experience on social network to help the chef to build his personal presence online. Regarding the market size, uh, we interviewed uh, two and a half thousand, uh, sorry, we served two and a half thousand people and uh, interviewed personally about 200 right now. And uh, you found out that there is a pretty much big demand and uh, we are targeting 35 million people who are actually willing to actually want to speak in a consultative chef and willing to spend at least 50 cents per minute. Uh, that gives us, even if these people, when a, if an average person will speak to the chef in the 60 minutes per year, that gives us a 1.05 billion dollar market. Our team, um, we have uh, two developers uh, and me, a uh, serial entrepreneur. Um, Mutual Gosher, he has eight years of developing experience in various web projects. Uh, one of the best ones in Poland was an oil exploration company back in Russia, where he's originally from. Uh, but in number two, uh, he, has, he is an expert in business process optimization plus content development. And uh, may I start first with uh, uh, two companies and one other in the space. Well, please uh, download our app. It's available right now. Uh, in past, in past uh, three weeks since we did our soft launch, we have 128 uh, active shares in the system, and we made our first $20 uh, last week. <laughs> Thank you. What's your year one goal of trying to sign? I mean, how many chefs do you need to sign up in order to really make this thing work for you? That's a very good question. Um, honestly, I don't know exact answer on the chef side, but on the customer side, we know that um, we know that our year one goal is to, to make at least uh, uh, seven thousand in revenue. So that will allow us, I mean, in terms of number of customers. That's what we actually have to have. Oh, one second, we have the populations. We'll need at least the same number of people using it, so it's about 70,000, I think, and uh, to generate this training. So, but how we enter the market is actually partnering with the recipe websites who already have these customers. We have no widget, talk to share button, and we know that at least 5% of visitors click this button and then actually the value proposition is pretty attractive and they go forward with the sign up and then uh, checking out the system. So we haven't yet rolled out on, on a big scale with the recipe websites, but we already developed a relationship and got their commitment. We are planning to the next month to uh, activate our widget and that's going to be that's I'll, I'll have a lot of answers uh, regarding the traction then. Uh, my question is why cooking? I mean, well, when I look at your app, I, like, I can see a lot of different verticals where people would pay actually maybe more money for that. Like, my computer is broken, I lost all my files, you know, things like that. Uh, what do you pick up cooking? It's not a criticism, I want to understand. Great question, thank you. Uh, honestly, uh, outside of having personal passion in health and food and, and having personal some problems uh, on the market, they actually. Uh, Look at the different market verticals before we started and chosen it, and we realized that the most repetitive use case will be cooking, and that's what we want to achieve with this app. At some point, we might spread it to other verticals uh, and be there, but right now we decided to continue to be a little sharp focus on one of the markets, and the food lovers and chef market was the ones who actually took it with the most excitement. And, and we realized that they will do most of our marketing for us, having this solution, while with the other markets, repetitive use is lower, and uh, it might be hard for us to actually reach these people. Okay. So you talked about the, uh, the chefs, and you, you were looking for, you're looking for more and more users. So, so what is your plan in the next few weeks uh, to grow the user base? 
so uh, we keep um, adding more and more chefs. So since Monday, we talk on Monday, we had 106 chefs. Today we have 128 before, like last time I checked out. So we actually uh, have a pretty good growth rate in terms of the chefs. So we want to get the number closer to 1,000, so to have more chefs available. And then we get closer to 1,000 chefs, that's when they actually want to activate the Talk to Chef button. So we sure could be sure that there'll be the right chef on the right question available right now. So um, we're going to keep the chef efforts, and as soon as we reach closer to 1,000, we activate the um, Talk to Chef button on the other website. And we have already five uh, closed deals. We, the last one was with uh, fair trade, if you're familiar, so they do the grocery delivery and they want to have actually help their customers with more uh, uh, cooking support by actually having chefs available on their website. In order to make the chefs happy, to, in order to make the chefs happy or better said busy, uh, you will need the cooks, I mean the, the, the end user so to speak, who wants to use them and if, so I think this, this needs to be a, a, a big effort right away. Yeah, um, I mean, like all B2B, mar I mean, two-sided marketplaces, so there is some uh, issue, but all the shares who we spoken with, and like who sign up, we, we make sure that they understand that they're not going to have flow of users immediately. And one of the one of the value proposition we give that you don't have to sit in front of your phone or laptop, do your everyday life. But when you get push notification, and if you are free right now, answer it. You don't have to. So because we're sending push notifications to several shares at the same time, make sure that somebody is going to pick up. At the same time, user when the user gets uh, loyal to the chef, he can actually contact him and schedule kind of meetings and like it all, uh, all this works. Okay. Thank you so much, Benin. So The next is Richard. Richard is the, co uh, the founder and CEO of Leland. Oh, here you are. <laughs> Richard, let me just change the presentation. But I think you also have to show something without the presentation. Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is uh, Richard Wimmer, I'm founder and CEO of Lulam. We are a technology company and develop an ambient light system and I have a short demo here you can see. Everybody knows Las Vegas and those places have these amazing interior uh, ambient solutions and experiences. At the same time, you know, we cannot see these in our places around here and there's a good reason. These systems they have in, in Vegas, they're usually very, very custom designed and expensive on top of that. So what we did is, we designed a solution allowing owners of places like these bars, hotels, restaurants, uh, fashion retailer, trend-setting places to create unique and memorable experiences through the use of color, light and motion. So they can also attract and retain their customers. The way it works is um, we have a smart tile in the court, it's a one foot by one foot. It can be freely arranged from one to as large as you want. And that possibility to arrange it in terms of size and configuration allows our platform to be applied to many spaces, commercial spaces. And it helps owners to create this kind of stunning unique effects. Um, so, we developed the technology in the last two years. We are three founders of the company and we develop uh, apps along with it so you can dial into the system uh, as well as software tools you give for free along with it so you can create content. One of our design principles is that the system has to be elegant, simple to use so everybody can create content with it. We, <coughs> um, we have gained a good traction, amount of traction recently. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's the system. And we have our cloud connectivity as well, so you can do services in the background. Uh, we have gained a good amount of traction recently in this $8 billion interior design market. Uh, we have showcased our solution at one of those big events. 
um, in an expo and have over 200 designers and target audience signed up. And we have a lot of meetings and uh, negotiations right now with top companies like Ensler, Architect, 360 Architects. And at the same time, we also have been able to uh, gain already first pre-orders for several systems. Um, we are raising uh, we are asking for additional three hundred thousand dollars to close our nine hundred thousand dollar round, and that money will be used so we can deliver our first system to the customers. Um, thank you so much. Thanks, Richard. Reminds me, I have to like to thank Diane also. Diane, she's with us here today, and. Uh, if you look at, at your uh, Twitter account, it's postcards from SF. She wrote a blog post about the new way how in San Francisco startup events. In. And I think this was the Las Vegas thing that would be a great uh, addition to it. Thanks. Thanks, Diana. Okay, thank you, Richard. Any questions from you? I'm really impressed with the technology and that we're taking a look at right now. Uh, but as a business owner, how is my experience going to be passed on to my customers to improve their custom their, their, their customer experience by taking a look at this and being subjected to it? Are you talking about a primary business vertical being nightclubs? Or are you talking any number? And where where do you find your sweet spot? And where do you think it's going to be? This is an excellent question. So we started and had the vision of doing ambient light as an artistic expression. There's one group right now, they just coming very strong, these are the trade shows because they spend a fair amount of money to exhibition. So those won't be focused right now, but we do see that uh, you know bars and restaurants and all the lobbies and proper places do like special expressions and activity to like in I was just going to say uh, bars, that's the last thing I want to see when I'm drinking alcohol is lights coming out, but that's okay. So, uh, do, did you have any uh, patents? Did you apply any patents for what you do? Because yeah, it's actually part of my uh, presentation. I skipped that one sentence. We have filed two patents. Uh, one is about the system seamless design, the other one is about the optics, and it's the thinnest product in the market, so it does not really need any complete installation. You can just add it on as a new model. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Richard.